Certainly the biggest challenges in diagnosing PBC are those that face patients everywhere who have chronic or rare diseases in that it's not a common disease, so there may be less familiarity with the disease, even on the part of their doctor, than one would hope. And that's not surprising, considering that many doctors will never see a patient with PBC in their entire career. Even if that patient gets to a specialist, like a gastroenterologist, they may only see a few PBC patients every year. Finally, if they get to an ultra-specialized doctor, a hepatologist, which is a sort of gastroenterologist, they, they, they're more likely to see more patients, be more familiar with the disease. So that rareness of the disease is in and of itself a challenge in the diagnosis. A second challenge in the diagnosis is around how the symptoms can be not present at the beginning, even though that something is going on in the liver that's not good, or the symptoms can be vague like fatigue, we all have fatigue every day, but patients with PBC can have really very severe fatigue. And people may not think of the liver as the first place that's causing that fatigue. Another common uh, symptom, either at diagnosis or shortly after, is itchiness. And again, people are not often thinking of the liver when they think of itchiness, and yet that can be a cause of itchiness. I think for doctors it's very challenging because there are lots of rare diseases and when you think of the number of patients with rare diseases, it's a big number. Lots of people have a rare disease, but for each rare disease there's relatively few patients. So for a primary care doctor, say your internist or your family practitioner, it's very hard to be aware of all of those rare diseases out there and yet it's so important for their patients. PBC in particular, affecting one in a thousand women over 40, is rare, but it's not so rare that a doctor um, shouldn't know something about it. In particular, there are treatment options and there are new treatment options. So it's very important that doctors are educated because if nothing is done, the risk to the patient of developing a severe liver complication, even maybe needing a liver transplant, over time is very high and um, can be really reduced with appropriate treatment. So because the outcome can be so serious and because there's treatments and new treatments, it's very important for doctors to be well informed. Um, and that level of information is enough to be thinking about the disease and making sure the patient perhaps gets to a specialist for the right care. Uh, the time for diagnosis, diagnosis may take a few wi a weeks or a few visits. It may not happen at the first visit to a doctor, and it may not happen with the first doctor a patient sees. So I think a patient needs to be patient and to work through the diagnostic process. For many patients, because they feel quite well at diagnosis, the diagnosis itself can come as a real surprise. Um, I think that that's also an interesting area where the name changed a few years ago from PBC to PBC, but the C changed. The C changed to cholangitis, which is inflammation of the bile ducts in the liver, and it changed from cirrhosis. And that change, I think, is very important because for many patients, the uh, hearing that they have primary biliary cirrhosis was kind of a shock since most people associate cirrhosis with alcohol use. In PBC, not everybody has cirrhosis first, and it has really nothing to do with alcohol use at all. It's an autoimmune disease, like rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So it's very important that, um, that people are well educated about the disease and that they realize that this is a lifelong journey and by using appropriate treatments, getting appropriate support, engaging with some of the great support groups we have here uh, in the United States is, a, is an important way to assure that they continue to have a healthy liver and do their best to keep their liver healthy.